Hey guys, Autoblog senior producer Chris McGraw here. I just want to take some time and talk about a question that I get asked quite a bit, which is what gear do I use when shooting the videos you see on Autoblog and what gear do I use when you see some of the photos that uh, I shoot for Autoblog. The main camera that I use is this guy right here. This is a Panasonic GH5. Uh, we started using Micro Four Thirds cameras around you know, four or five years ago when the GH4 came out. Uh, mainly because they offered 4K capability. Um, so we switched over to that ecosystem and as new cameras came out, the GH5, which is this guy here, and the GH5S, um, we've upgraded the camera bodies and just kept the same glass. Uh, I really like this camera. It's got internal stabilization and a lot of the lenses that I use also have stabilization. So I can run around, uh, just you know, have this on my face running around outside when we're doing a lot of our feature shoots and uh, shoot everything from you know slow motion to regular motion track passing shots and with that stabilization it looks really good uh, just even off a tripod just being handheld and it's so light it's very 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 light which i really like with our previous camera the uh, canon 5d mark iii um, you couldn't shoot video and look through the viewfinder like you can with this camera. So you had to have like a whole shoulder set up with a, you know, an eyepiece and it was pretty heavy and bulky and it was a pain to set up. This is just run and gun. I can grab it, take off, run around a track and get some pretty great shots. Um, as far as the capabilities, it's got 4K up to 60 frames per second, which is really nice. It also has 180 frames per second, 1080. Now the newest Panasonic camera, which we use more for studio work, has 240 frames per second, but it doesn't have that internal stabilization. So for me, when I'm out traveling and I'm running and gunning, um, just not as good because I, I really use that stabilization. Really like the Panasonic cameras. Uh, really haven't looked back too much as far as um, going back to a full frame versus the micro four thirds. Let's talk about the glass that I use and we'll go uh, with our widest lens first, um, which is also the only lens that's not a Panasonic that I use. Uh, Panasonic does make a seven to 14, uh, but it's an F4. This is an Olympus seven to 14 F 2.8. And it's a little bit bigger than and heavier than the Panasonic version, but that extra stop really helps out in shooting interiors, low light situations, that sort of a thing. Um, so you might be thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, seven to 14 millimeters, that's crazy wide. I can't imagine that on like, you know, my Canon DSLR or my Nikon DSLR. Uh, the big deal with having a small sensor like the one on the Panasonic GH5 is that there's a two times crop rate. And basically what that means is, even though this lens is a seven to 14, it has the same focal length as something that's twice the length. So it's a 14 to 28. So it's a wide angle lens, but it's not super wide. At the very widest with that 14 millimeter, you do get some distortion, but it's not anything too crazy. Uh, and it's just really good glass. And I use this probably more than anything in my bag, as long as I can get up close to the action. Um, second lens, this is more of a general uh, lens. It is the Panasonic 12 to 35, so it has a normal focal range equivalent of 24 to 70, which is a popular lens you'll see on a lot of different cameras. This is also an f2.8. It has uh, power optical image stabilization right there. So um, this guy just lives on my camera. When I travel, I just have him on the camera. That way, if I need to go grab a shot, uh, I could just do that. The 12 millimeter is fairly wide. Um, I don't like using the 12 millimeter for interiors. I'd rather use the wider 7 to 14, but um, if I only had to choose one lens to do anything with, it would be this guy, just because it goes all the way up to 35 millimeter or a 70 millimeter equivalent. Super light, super easy to use as well. When I'm on a track, running around the outside of a track and I can't get too close to the action without, you know, unnecessarily bringing danger to myself or extra risk. Uh, this next lens is what I bring. Um, this is the Panasonic 
35 to 100. And as you'll see with all of these lenses, there's either no overlap or very slight overlap. So I have seven to 14, then I have 12 to 35, and this one's a 35 to 100. Also a super popular uh, focal length, uh, normal focal range of 70 to 200 millimeters, which is a very popular telephoto lens focal range. Um, this is also a 2.8, also has an optical image stabilization switch, which works with the camera body to really make everything look really, really great handheld. Um, you know, normally I would be worried about shooting something at 200 millimeter focal length, um, but with the image stabilization, I can handhold all of these shots and they turn out great. Finally, uh, the lens that I probably use the least out of my kit, and this is really, this is the entire kit for video. We have just the four lenses is uh, the longest lens in my kit. Uh, it is the Lumix uh, Leica collaboration. Uh, it is a 100 to 400 millimeter lens, which means it has the uh, full frame, uh, normal focal length equivalent of 200 to 800. So this is an incredibly long lens and it is a super heavy lens, especially for such a light camera. You have the tripod ring and mount, so you, you mount this bad boy right to the tripod and have the camera hanging off the end. Um, the reason I use this the least is because I don't need super long shots very often, um, but when I do, it is so, so, so nice to have something like this. It's basically like a telescope on the end of your camera. And some of my favorite shots I've ever gotten have been with a lens like this. Um, specifically, one that comes to mind is a couple years ago, I was uh, filming, we were driving Subarus through Patagonia and we were actually on a ferry that was taking us across to Tierra del Fuego. And uh, there were some dolphins that were jumping next to the boat and they were so far away um, that, you know, even my normal telephoto 35 to 100 wasn't going to cut it. So I threw this on and I was able to get some really great slow motion shots of the dolphins, uh, jumping out of the water. And as you can see, like, look at how far this extends. It's just, it's a large lens, uh, super heavy, but when you need a long lens like this, um, definitely worth it. I also was shooting uh, Pike's peak earlier this year, the hill climb, and I was using, uh, the GH5 not only for video on that shoot but also for stills because I was running up and down the mountain and didn't have space in my bag for my normal stills camera and uh, this was able to get some really great shots up on the mountain. So I uh, really love this lens, very rarely comes out of my bag but it's something that I always want to have with me. All right. Uh, so speaking of my bag, I do have a couple of bags that I use depending on where I'm going and how much I'm carrying. And uh, the first one, both of them are made by Low Pro. Let me get the first one here. This bad boy is the Low Pro Pro Tactic 450 AW, which is a lot uh, of letters on the end of that. It's a long name. Uh, I really love this. Take this bag with me more than any other bag. It's pretty big. Uh, it has a laptop sleeve. It lets me fit most of my camera gear, definitely all of the video gear in there, super easy. And it's got all these straps around the front so you can stick things to it. So it's got straps on the side. I can use this pocket for water bottles. I can use this to hold my batteries and I can even stick a tripod to the side of it because it has all these loops up front. Super durable too. I've traveled almost everywhere with that bag. I've traveled uh, to five different continents with that bag, six different continents with that bag, uh, actually, and uh, it's held up over the years. The only time I've ever had to carry something else is when I have brought my photo gear with me and my video gear. And so we're talking about two cameras, two ecosystems, two sets of lenses, plus a laptop, plus batteries, plus GoPros, suction mounts, just a ton of stuff. And for that, I use the Low Pro Whistler 450 backpack, which is right over here. And so as you can tell, this bad boy is a bit bigger. Um, it also stands out a lot more with these like neon orange straps, which I'm not a huge fan of having my camera bag stand out. Uh, just because when I'm traveling, I don't really need to 
draw attention to the fact that I have thousands of dollars worth of equipment on my back uh, in places that, I, um, that I'm not familiar with. Um, but it's got a huge pocket up front, huge pocket up top, and it's got the camera system in the back. Um, both of these bags have the camera system in the back, which I think is fantastic um, because in order to get at my camera gear, you have to go in through the back. So when it's on my back, um, nobody can reach behind me and start pulling gear out of my backpack without me knowing. One other piece of equipment that I mentioned before um, that I use probably more than anything else that you see here um, is a GoPro. I just have the Hero um, 7. I've been upgrading these as they come out. Uh, the Hero 7 has great stabilization. I used to have to use the Hero 5 on a, a, a Karma Grip, which is a gimbal, but with the internal stabilization of the Hero 7, you could just hold it. Don't need the gimbal. It's just one less thing to go wrong. Uh, usually just suction mount these to different parts of the car. I have a clamp too, so you can clamp underneath, like say you're driving a Ford Raptor, you can clamp underneath and really get a good shot of the uh, shocks. So I love GoPros, use them a ton, um, and they're really just a great camera to have around and have in your kit. Some other stuff that's in my camera bag, I just have a ton of batteries. Uh, we use Rode VideoMic Pros to pick up audio so you can hear the audio uh, here. The audio that I'm talking right now is through the Rode. And then uh, this microphone that you see here is uh, Zoom F1 field recorder. And so what that is, is it is just a little recorder that could fit in your pocket. It's got a lav mic coming out and you get to record your audio and it sounds really great. You don't have to worry about a wireless setup. Um, so it's a lot easier of a solution. That's all the gear that we use for Autoblog. I hope this was helpful. You can check out all the links in the description to see some of the other gear that we use, some of the gear that Drew, our director of photography, uses on the Nikon side of things. Thanks for watching.